right, all right. God bless each and every one of you out there in Christ Jesus. Of course, this is Brother Ron, and I am back to communicate the latter end of Judah, the, the fall of Judah, this, this time uh, which ultimately is a horrific time uh, concerning the condition of the children of Israel, uh, but ultimately a time of, of separation to bring about restoration. And, and so that uh, is uh, the other side of this, uh, uh, looking at the, the uh, successful uh, part of what God is trying to do concerning his people, how he's trying to do things to preserve his people, to help his people uh, be in ultimate right standing with him. And so uh, as we're looking at uh, Second Kings, um, last chapter 25, as well as the book of Jeremiah, as well as uh, uh, a plethora of other books and scriptures, we're going to get a good picture of what is happening and and how uh, God is planning to do this work because ultimately he still wants to ensure that the that the Messiah comes through this line, comes through Judah, comes through uh, the sacred people in which he prophesied um, back in uh, Deuteronomy, as we read, uh, the reality of one coming out of his people in order to be the one that the people would all, would have to listen to. Uh, and, and so there is a valuable um, truth that we are seeing in that in how God is able to restore and to to reconcile and to make things that are of offense uh, res uh, uh, restored and new. And so that's a very important thing. So one of the things uh, concerning Judah um, is that uh, they, uh, at, at this time, they're believing that they can be uh, saved by other means that they're they're believing that they could uh, uh, look out among the nations for uh, foreign partners so that they can be relieved from this uh, tormenting uh, 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 army that is coming and approaching them to to take them from the land in which God had given them. So uh, when, when we look at um, our modern days, the, these modern days, when we look at, uh, when, we, we, when we meditate on the topic of, of slavery, we, we know that slavery is something that has been in operation for millennia, for, uh, uh, thousands of years, people uh, have been, or nations have been rising against other nations. Uh, we've gone through uh, the book of Judges, the, the uh, book of um, Exodus, um, you know, many different books that talk about the situations of Israel or the situations of other nations. And uh, so you have these nations that ultimately want to um, take a people group and use them for uh, use them for uh, the the manual labor that they would need done um, to build the face of the nation, to build the country, to build um, the status. You know, even uh, when we look at way back in um, uh, uh, the book of Genesis, you know, how it's in man to want to uh, build up uh, uh, in reference to uh, Nimrod and how Nimrod uh, and, and his pursuits to build up the Tower of Babel, 
uh, and, and how God, you know, ultimately judged that work to to not prosper uh, because uh, he saw the, the the unity, he saw the uh, the craftsmanship, he saw all of the things that they were attempting to do, and he and and God didn't want that to happen, so he ultimately uh, uh, cursed that project and caused the uh, people to afterwards not even be able to understand each other because the birth of multiple languages uh, manifested in that time uh, by the confusion that God put on them, um, which caused them to now speak a multitude of, of different languages, um, which caused them not to reassemble or not to reassemble to build the project that they they set out to build from uh, the beginning, and, and so uh, we we are seeing that uh, slavery is something that has been in operation. Uh, where we look at Exodus with the Pharaoh and how the Pharaoh, you know, enslaved the children of Israel because he saw that uh, they were. Uh, you know, growing in number, uh, they uh, were ultimately recipients of the blessing that came from the very beginning in reference to be, being fruitful and multiplying. They, they had the, the glory of God on them. And so uh, because they were participating in the customs and the ways of Egypt at that time, you know, they were people that would be ushered into slavery because of the violations, because of because of the atrocities that they were committing. And so God allowed them to go into slavery. But uh, you, you, we, we see that this is not just um, uh, within the, uh, the context of the Bible. We see that human nature, uh, we see that history uh, has done this. You know, a multitude of different civilizations would capitalize off uh, off other nations, uh, taking control of other nations and causing certain individuals to become the the uh, the burdens, uh, the, the the ones who would bear the burdens of the uh, requirements that uh, the superior nations would place upon them. And so, even in this modern day, in our um, uh, in in America, uh, you know. And in, other, and in in many other countries, uh, there is a delusion. There's a delusion and a, a corruption in reference to uh, the and and because of the delusion, there's there's this rising doctrine or resurrecting false doctrine of the uh, the ancient civilizations, uh, the ancient civilizations of Africa. And so uh, because of the transatlantic slave trade, uh, uh, people uh, are looking at themselves in reference to the darker skinned people. They're, they're, they're looking at themselves as victims of what happened in reference to the slave trade and and to some degree they are to some degree they are victims uh, people are to some degree victims when they are brought into slavery but they're not in reference to the fact that we don't consider the the fact that people civilizations are uh are put Uh, that Moses, when we read the book of Deuteronomy, we were looking at, let me see, what um, uh, chapter 5, yes, I believe it's chapter 5, let's scan it real quick. Um, one of the things that Moses was trying to articulate to the people was the fact that when they, when they eventually go into the land, go into the promised land, um, uh, this uh, uh, this land would ultimately be inhabited by the um, 
foreign nations, ungodly nations, nations that feared not God. And so uh, what Moses was trying to tell them um, is, oh, yes, here, uh, verses uh, 8, 9, 10. Okay, um, verses 8 it says, Thou shalt not make thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Um, and, and so one of the important things about that is that, um, and, and we can say that the, uh, the heathen nation, the Gentile nation, are not under the law, are not under the Mosaic law. But the reality is, is that there is always a law of some degree on a people group, on creation. In Romans chapter 2, Paul is stating that those that do what is contained in the law, naturally, they are a law unto themselves. So people who do righteousness naturally, according to the law of their hearts, there is a, uh, a blessing that they receive. There is a uh, understanding. There is um, grace that they're given to some degree. Uh, and those who were uh, before uh, Jesus Christ who knew not the uh, the doctrines of the law or the doctrine uh, of the New Testament, um, those people who were in foreign lands who died without the knowledge of Christ or the knowledge of the Mosaic law, those people were judged by the law of the heart. Those people were judged by natural law. There's natural, it's, it's, and when I say natural laws, I'm talking about the fact that they were judged according to the fact that uh, it, it's it's known in the body. The body knows it's wrong to murder. The body knows it's wrong to steal. The body gives off a uh, it, it gives off the truth that adultery is wrong. Uh, the, the body gives off the truth that. Um, you know, uh, uh, lying and doing all sorts of other things are wrong. The, 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 there is a testimony in the body that reveals your, your body. You, you feel funny. Your, your body, if you, you, if you are in a, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 sober state at least, and you um, deceive someone, your body testifies against you. If you are committing adultery or you are, you know, um, stealing from someone or, or doing something that is, uh, that is against the, the, at, the at least natural laws of your body, the, 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 your body will testify against you. Your, your, the nature will testify against you. Natural law is something that is within man. Uh, and, and so this is why God was justified to condemn uh, uh, the people back in Noah's day, you know, uh, you know, uh, wiped them out with the flood. You know, uh, they were continually doing evil. There were there's specific requirements and laws that are given from God naturally to man that man has to hearken to. And if man doesn't, man ultimately will receive the consequences uh, from God. And so what, what are we saying? What are we saying? We're saying that ultimately when it comes to slavery, when it comes to the, the transatlantic slave trade, when it comes to what happened to the dark skinned people, this is not an isolated event 
of unrighteousness that has not happened throughout centuries, throughout millennia. Slavery has, is, is something that has been in operation as nations conquer other nations. And one of the things that is a reality when uh, the nation who's conquered is conquered, uh, one of the realities is that there is idolatrous practices. There are practices uh, that are done that are against the ways of God, that are against the ways of natural law, uh, the ways of the own people. So there's a, there's a hypocrisy, there's a corruption, there's a pollution that is in operation that brings about judgment to the people. And so, uh, so, so we are saying that the African people, even when you look at them in our modern day, the people that are uh, uh, tribesmen, uh, uh, the tribesmen uh, parts of Africa, you see that many of them still wear the attire, still practice uh, all sorts of ritualistic behaviors, uh, corrupt behaviors that are connected to ancestral uh, a demonic spirits that are connected to all forms of corruption that are proof to why they were led away captive by the Europeans, by uh, people of another nation. And so many of the people in our modern day in America, they hide away the reasons to why uh, the African culture was attacked, and it wasn't just the African culture. It, you you have um, many cultures over time, as I was stating, but also you have um, you know many of the uh, Muslim nations who also bought slaves, who also took slaves and brought them to their countries uh, and made them servants to them. Um, so the Europeans also made them servants to them. Uh, uh, but, but we see that the abomination of child sacrifice, the abominations of, you know, you know, doing things um, um, in reference to the violations of, of natural law, of the law of the heart, uh, these things done over time will ultimately bring about the consequences that we see. Um, you know, I, I want to look real quick at um, Micah, Micah chapter one, because this was a prophecy that the, the, the Lord God of Israel gave to Micah, the prophet, concerning uh, uh, the, reason, the reasons to why um, uh, uh, Samaria, northern Israel, and Judah, southern Israel, why they would ultimately be judged by God and taken away captive by a foreign nation. And, and, and so, uh, so many, and so why are we comparing that to what happened to the transatlantic slave trade or any other uh, uh, slaves throughout history? We're comparing that because uh, when, when it comes to the characteristics, the actions, the, uh, the evil that people do prior to being enslaved, there is a similarity between uh, the nations. There's a similarity. So there's a similarity um, uh, in, in reference to the uh, African culture and the other cultures that are taken into uh, captivity. Uh, there, there's a similarity. There, there's our actions that correspond. There's actions that match. There's violations that are similar uh, between the cultures. And so these violations, these worshiping of foreign gods, these worshiping or these, this polyistic um, uh, type uh, lifestyle, the worshiping of multiple gods, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, uh, bringing your own children and putting them on an altar and lighting the altar with fire uh, and, and praying to the, the God um, in which you think is going to help you against the enemy nations that are coming against you. Uh, all of this was a practice that the people would constantly, you know, do. So, um, so, so there's a similarity. So we, and, and so many people in our modern day, they are looking at the black people as a, uh, they're trying to take the ancestral doctrines and trying to bring them back, uh, and, uh, you know, ultimately practice certain things. And so when you hear them say, hey, king, hey, queen, you know, uh, you know, they're, they're referring back to the ancestral doctrines, you know, stating that they come from kingship, that they come from authority, they come from power, um, they, they come from, you know, uh, aspects of, of royalty that they want to keep as an identity. And, and so this is very bad because uh, God doesn't like that. God doesn't want that. Uh, the sons and daughters of God, the, the true believers in Christ Jesus, we know that we are kings and priests because, not, not kings and queens, we're kings and priests because of what Jesus has done for us and, and what he is doing through us. Uh, and, and so the reality is, is that God is trying to uh, make us into something special that is far beyond the skin color of the modern world, the skin color, the, the lower things of this world. The Bible says, know no man after the flesh. Know no man after their skin color. Know no man after their physical uh, body in the sense that you respect the physical body, not understanding that there will be a, uh, uh, a renewed body, a renewed body, a a glorified body that God is going to give to the people that overcome through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, the, the reality is that God is trying to ensure that we know our real identity through him and not be associated with the lower identities that are associated with the corrupt doctrines of the earth that are not um, uh, truly, uh, something that is, uh, honorable or, uh, uh, or should be given, um, acknowledgement. These things should be abandoned. The, the, the doctrines that have come from the African cultures, the corrupt doctrines, the, the corrupt doctrines that have come from the, the Chinese cultures, the corrupt doctrines that have come from, you know, the European lands or, or the uh, North America uh, 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 corrupt uh, uh, the, the or or the African the, no the um, Native American um, uh, um, cultures the Indian cultures or whatnot um, all of these the, the demonic doctrines that are at the seat of these cultures have to be abandoned because they stem from polytheism. They stem from the worship of many gods. They stem from uh, multitudes of pollution of beliefs and ideas that are contrary to the one God of creation. The, the, the one God who represents himself and sh reveals himself as he desires, and he is not connected to any of the gods of, um, you know, Scandinavia or uh, Russia or um, um, Japan or China 
or India or, um, you know, uh, um, the Middle East, you know, the Syrian gods or uh, the, uh, the, the um, European um, gods or the, the gods of Hawaii or Alaska or, you know, uh, C- uh, Canada, um, you, you know, or South America, uh, uh, or the, the, um, the, the, uh, the Mexican, um, the, the middle of, uh, the Central America, uh, American doctrines, you know, all of these doctrines have to be abandoned. They have to be, uh, taken away. And so you have, the shifting of powers that are always happening. One nation conquers another nation because God is cursing that nation. This nation conquers this nation because God is cursing that nation. God doesn't like the doctrines of the Aztecs, the doctrines of these foreign nations or these old nations. So so for the, um, the Americans in this country to, to bring back the ancestral worship of the African continent, the African cultures, that's abominable in the sight of God. That's not the, uh, they are not, they are, they should not be reverenced. They should not be acknowledged. They, they should be cast off. They, they should be kicked out of your house. You shouldn't have the, the statues in your house, the, the, you know, the, the wood statues of some woman, um, from Africa with, with, with some beads in her hair. No, you shouldn't have that. You shouldn't have the, the African zebra statue in your house, you know, that, that, that's a representation of the African culture. You shouldn't have, uh, the, 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 um, the, uh, s- statues, the, the, the very, um, the clay, wood, or metal statues in your house representing um, the, the, the African uh, um, roots, you know, African roots. No, that's pollution. That's not Christian. And, and so uh, it's, it's, so we have to be careful and have to understand that this, these are the reasons, these are the ancestral demonic reasons to why God has cast off nations, uh, whether they're Israel or not, you know, it, it, he, he's in charge of every nation. All of these nations have to respond to the God of creation. They, they, and when they are in violation, they are going to be replaced. They're going to, going to and they may be um, taken over by a nation that is even far wicked than they are, like Israel. Israel here is going to be replaced by Babylon, and Babylon is far more wicked than uh, Israel. Um, and, and so... So in our modern day, we are bombarded with a multitude of doctrines and, and, and pollutions that God is trying to purge from the people. And the people that are the, the purged of the world, that, that, you know, we are in the world, but not of the world, those people are the the people who have power through Christ. Those people who have power through uh, uh, the spirit that God sent to the earth uh, to empower the people so that they can become the sons and daughters of God. This Holy Spirit is what gives the sons of God power to actually become, I, I, I remember talking to a brother recently and I was talking about um, first, I was talking about John, uh, the book of John chapter um, one, uh, where it says, but as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, uh, uh, even to them that believe on his name, um, uh, not those that are born of the flesh or 
or born of the will of man or born of any other thing, but those that are born of the spirit. So God wants to bring his spirit into man's spirit to create a hub, a station to where transformation can begin, transformation of the soul and the body. So there's a transformation of, of the soul because the personality, the identity is within the soul and, and God is trying to transform our personalities and our behavior so that it can be in the likeness of the God of creation. Um, so let's read Micah here where, um, verses one, Micah chapter one. The, the word of the Lord came, uh, that came to Micah, the Moserite, in the days of Jotham, um, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. These were southern kings, kings of um, Jerusalem and Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. So, which he saw concerning the north and the south. Hear all ye people, hearken, O earth, and all that therein is, and let the Lord God be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place, and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth, and the mountains shall be molten under him, and the valleys shall be cleft and wax before the fire and as the waters that are poured down a steep place for the transgressions of Jacob is all this and for the sins of the house of Israel what is the transgression of Jacob asking the question is it not Samaria and what are the high places of Judah are they not Jerusalem therefore I will make Samaria as a heap of the field and as planting of a vineyard and I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley and I will discover the foundations thereof and all the graven images thereof shall be beaten to pieces and all the hires thereof shall be burnt with the, with the fire and all the idols thereof will I lay desolate for she gathered it of the hire of an harlot and they shall return uh, to the hire of an harlot therefore I will wail and howl I will go uh, stripped and naked I will make a uh, wailing like the dragons and uh, mourning as the owls for her wounds are incurable for it is come unto Judah. He is come unto the gate of my people, uh, even to Jerusalem. Declare ye, uh, uh, declare ye it not in Gath. Weep ye not at all uh, in the house of Ophrah. Uh, roll um, thereof, uh, uh, roll thyself in the dust, and so we're, we're we're gonna stop there, because what we are seeing here in the book of Micah is that uh, we are seeing that Micah is prophesying of the fact that there is an indictment that has been placed on uh, Samaria, an indictment that has been placed on Judah because of the multitudes of sins that they were involved in the 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 very idols that they were crafting and creating which represented the very gods of the four nations that they were worshiping um the multitudes of gods the 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 fact that they were worshiping a god of war a god of love a god of um of of of, of this benefit or that benefit, uh, a, a God of the oceans or a God of the earth. You know, they, they were worshiping Baal. They was worship, worshiping Ashtaroth. They was worshiping um, all of these gods 
uh, that were uh, a representative of the fact that they were not trusting in the God of of their nativity, of the God that gave them the land, the God that um, ultimately uh, blessed them to be a people, uh, to be a separate people and not a scattered people. Um, and so they were worshiping the gods and, and uh, uh, emulated and practiced the characteristics of the foreign nations around them. You know, even in this modern day, we have foreign nations all around us and the Christian, if not careful, can take on the identity of the foreign nations around them. They can practice doctrines and all sorts of characteristics of those around them that are not in fellowship with the God of creation. Um, bad characteristics, things that are ultimately in opposition to the way in which God wants a Christian to live. And so that's important to note. So we, we see that God is uh, saying words like harlot. Uh, he's saying um, things like um, uh, the, the fact that um, they, they would, he would, he's talking about actions that they would do in reference to the very, uh, the screaming like a dragon or uh, a, a mourning like an owl. And so he's describing their uh, not only their characteristics and what they've done as far as um, what God doesn't want them to do. He's also describing what will happen to them, the, the, the fact that they would be carried away uh, into bondage, into captivity, um, and how their sins would hurt them ultimately. And so uh, this is something that has, so this is, um, far, this is uh, around the time of the fall of northern Israel, which was many kings, uh, and, and there, there, was, there, there would be a few kings after that before the uh, fall of, of Judah, because uh, uh, after Hezekiah um, uh, would come Manasseh and Ammon and then Josiah and, and then um, Jehoah has, uh, and also, um, Jehoiakim and Jehoashin and Zedekiah. So you would have numerous, um, kings, um, prior to the fall of Judah, but, uh, this was prophesied, you know, um, as far as their condition long before the fall of Judah, uh, during around the time of the fall of of um, northern Israel, Samaria. So uh, looking at um, so looking at uh, let's let's go to second Kings and we're going to break down the story here of the latter end of Judah. So t uh, chapter 25 of 2 Kings, uh, it, it's, it basically starts off um, at the uh, ninth year of Zedekiah's reign. So Zedekiah is um, the king who was appointed by Nebuchadnezzar. And so Zedekiah um, is in a condition to where he's not trying to submit to the coming king this 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 um, enemy king Nebuchadnezzar he's he he wants a way out of being conquered uh, and losing status and losing his reign uh, to this foreign king and so uh, what happens is, uh, in his ninth year, you have uh, Nebuchadnezzar coming, um, and what Nebuchadnezzar does is he does a war tactic. This war tactic is uh, this besieging tactic uh, to where he brings an army, his army, um, around the city, around the nation that he's trying to suffocate. And so he 
creates forts, he creates tents, he creates, you know, uh, places in which they can station themselves for a while. These strongholds are stations to where they can um, separate or stop any of the um, exporting or importing. So note there there would be no more, um, you know, delivering of any substance to the nation so that they can um, survive. So the, so they would so there would be no food, no um, trading, nothing that would come from the outside in because Nebuchadnezzar and his army. Um, the, the army of Nebuch uh, armies of Nebuchadnezzar would uh, surround the nation, would besiege them, and and so now it would be a waiting game. It would be a uh, starvation game. It would be a um, a, a literal um, causing them to submit under uh, this weakening of Judah process. And so they ultimately, um, uh, after about, I, was, I would say a year and a half, after about a year and a half is when you have this, this time of true surrender to where now the uh, nation of uh, this Neb Nebuchadnezzar uh, and his his armies are going in to completely take over the nation. But uh, bef but before we look at the actual takeover, there are things that happen um, that reveal the nature of the situation. So we we were talking about how um, Zedekiah was looking for a solution. He was looking for an answer, looking for a, a, a savior. Uh, they, he was looking in the direction of the wrong savior. <laughs> so he was um, in chapter 37 of the book of Jeremiah. Um, you know, all this time, Jeremiah is telling them that the answer is to submit to Nebuchadnezzar. The, the answer is not for them to uh, try to find other solutions, other nations that would help them, other alliances or, you know, uh, uh, nations with armies that could come and support them. That's that would not be the answer because God, it's God's desire to uh, take away Judah because of their constant rebellion. So it was not the uh, it's it's not the foreign nations per se. It's God, and so uh, uh, you know the the Bible says, "If God be with you, who can be against you?" But the reality is, what in, in Zedekiah's case, if God is not with you, then you know people can come against you, and and so. That's the reality here. Uh, and so we, uh, in verse 1 of, of Jeremiah uh, 37, it says, and, the, and, and King Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, uh, reigned uh, instead of uh, Kaniah, which we know is um, uh, Jeho Jehoashin, uh, the son of Jehoiakim. Um, whom um, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. But neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land uh, did hearken unto the word of the Lord, which he spake by the prophet Jeremiah. That's the problem. And uh, Zedekiah the king sent uh, uh, Jehokal, uh, the son of Shal uh, Shalemiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, uh, the priest to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now unto the Lord our God for us. Now Jeremiah came and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. 
And uh, then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt. And when the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem uh, heard tidings of them, they departed from Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord unto the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, thus, uh, thus shall ye say to the king of Judah that sent you unto me to inquire of me. Uh, behold, Pharaoh's army, which is come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land, and the Chaldeans shall come again and fight against this city and take it and burn it with fire. Uh, Thus saith the Lord, deceive not yourselves, saying the Chaldeans uh, shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. For, uh, for though ye had smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remain but wounded men among them, yet uh, should they rise up every man in his tent and burn this city with fire. Wow. So what is being communicated here uh, by Jeremiah is that this foreign nation, um, Egypt, Pharaoh uh, uh, um, of Egypt, he cannot protect them from the hand of the Lord against them. He cannot protect them uh, because it's, it's, it's the desire of God to take them away because of their sin. And so uh, one of the uh, things that's mentioned uh, is uh, here that because of the the conduct of the nation that they cannot deceive themselves into thinking that the Lord uh, is not going to bring uh, the uh, nation of Babylon back to pursue them because they, uh, even though, uh, even though Babylon hears uh, the news of um, Egypt uh, coming and they don't want to be in a vulnerable position to be taken over to be to to lose a battle to Egypt so they uh, pick up what they have stationed and they are now retreating but uh, Jeremiah is saying that no don't think it's over don't think that this is the conclusion of the matter because of the sins that they had done, they are going to reap. Um, uh, they are going to reap because of what they've sown in in, ref, in reference to the darkness that they had done, and so the reality is that God is uh, uh, trying to frustrate the efforts of. Uh, what Zedekiah is doing because Zedekiah is not submitted to the God of Israel, uh, even though he's to some degree attempting to listen to the prophet. He's, he's, he's not listening to the prophet. Uh, and so this is one of the reasons to why the continual onslaught of uh, Babylon is coming against them, coming um, for them. And so, um, so la later on in the chapter, we see that Jeremiah uh, is imprisoned. Jeremiah is imprisoned because the people uh, are um, saying that his words are offending the nation. Though his words are not for the betterment of the nation; they're for the hurt of the nation. <clears throat> he's he's uh, they're ultimately trying to say that he is a traitor. He's not loyal to the, the kingdom. He's not loyal to Judah. And so because of that, he should be uh, excommunicated. He should be imprisoned. He should be killed for, you know, treason or, or whatnot. And, and so they imprison him. They, they imprison him in a very, um, 
you know, an unbearable prison, but yet he's released because the king calls him out. The, the king is trying to see if there's any words from the Lord, anything concerning um, the condition um, or, or the status um, of the nation in which may have changed depending on God's desire. Uh, and, uh, so it says in verse, uh, 17 going down, um, I'll read verse 16, just to give us context. Uh, when Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon and into the cabins, uh, and Jeremiah had remained there many days. Then Zedekiah, the king, sent and took him out. And the king uh, uh, asked him secretly in his house and said, Is there any word from the Lord? And Jeremiah said, There is. For uh, said he that, uh, um, for, uh, for said he, Thou shalt be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto the unto King Zedekiah, uh, "What have I offended against thee, uh, or against thy servants, or against any, uh, or against this people that ye have put me in prison? Where are now your prophets, which uh, prophesied unto you, saying, The king of Babylon shall come not against you?" nor against this land. Therefore, hear now, I pray you, I pray thee, um, uh, O my Lord, the King, uh, let my supplication, my prayer, uh, I pray thee, be accepted before thee, that thou cause me not to return to the house of uh, Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. Uh, and, and so he's making a plea for his life. He's making, Je Jeremiah is making a plea uh, uh, to have him taken from uh, this particular prison because of the atrocious, atrocious nature of it. Um, and, and, and so in, and in that, he also is communicating to Zedekiah that the, the, the end goal or the end, uh, the, the, the trajectory uh, it has not changed. What's going to happen has not changed uh, because Zedekiah has not changed. And, and, and so the nation has not changed. And so it's the, uh, it's the will of God for Judah to be taken away by Babylon. And so the, the answer of peace would be for Zedekiah to surrender to the king. Uh, and, and this is what is this is what Zedekiah is wrestling with. This is what uh, the people are wrestling with. And uh, it says at the end, then Zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah into the court of the prison, uh, and that they should give him a daily piece of bread out of the Baker Street until all the bread in the city were spent. Thus. Uh, Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. And so he was transferred into another section of the prison, uh, something that was more bearable so that, you know, he wouldn't die in the dungeon part, in the, uh, the dungeon and cabin part, which was, uh, you know, not uh, something that was livable, you know. Um, and so, so, this is what we're ultimately seeing. And so the, the judgment in reference to Babylon is coming for Judah. Uh, they have come uh, when they eventually do come and um, begin the final processes of, of besieging the nation, um, setting up their forts, um, ultimately, you know, uh, um, going through the year and a half, you know, of uh, surrounding them and, and, and um, stripping them of all uh, substance and sustenance. Um, and, you know, then um, at the proper time uh, during uh, Zedekiah's 11th year um, is where we see that the when when the 
people begin to make the move, the army begins to make the move to overtake the city is when Zedekiah doesn't give himself up. He goes through a secret passage. He goes through um, the wall, a, a place in the, the wall of the nation to escape out into the plains, to escape out into, uh, because he doesn't want to surrender. He doesn't want to uh, be um, captive, a captive to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And so this is a problem. And so, uh, so we're going to read a few things of what happens to Zedekiah. Um, at, at the fall of, at the fall of uh, Judah, uh, so in, uh, let's see here, Second Kings chapter twenty-five. Uh, let's go down to. Uh, oh, we can just start from the beginning, verse one, and it came to pass. Uh, in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came he and all his hosts against Jerusalem and pitched against it, and they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine... Um, that is a result of them cutting everything off, uh, prevailed in the city and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate uh, between two walls, uh, which is by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans, uh, the Chaldees, uh, were against the city roundabout, and the king went the way toward the plain. And the army of the Chaldees pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army uh, were scattered from him. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon, to Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him and they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and put out the eyes of Zedekiah and uh, bound him with fetters of brass and carried him to Babylon. And in the, and in the fifth month on the seventh day of the month, which is the ninth, 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, a captain of the guard, a servant of the King of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and he burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the house, houses of Jerusalem and even great men's house. Uh, burnt he with fire and all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about now the rest of the people that were left in the city that uh, and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon with the remnant of the multitude did uh, Nebuchadnezzar the captain of the guard carry away. Uh, but the captain of the guard left of the poor uh, of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen. Uh, and, and so we, we see here the ultimate takeover in reference to what happened uh, concerning uh, the attempted escape of, Z uh, of, uh, of Zedekiah, but ultimately he was caught uh, and uh, judgment was given uh, to where his children, uh, sons, um, died before him. Uh, and, of course, his eyes were plucked out um, for his uh, rebellion against uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, against Babylon. And, and so uh, Jeremiah warned him of this. Jeremiah warned him and, and told him to submit to 
the king of Babylon, that that was the way out. That was the word of the Lord concerning uh, him uh, being, uh, him at least um, being able to keep his life. Uh, but he, we saw that he rebelled against that. Uh, one of the things that the end of the chapter says is that after about 37 years in captivity, that Jehoashin, who was in Babylon, um, who was in a prison in Babylon, um, Jehoashin is the son of Jehoiakim, uh, which would be the uh, nephew of Zedekiah. Um, he um, was shown favor by the next king. Um, uh, the next king, which would be the son of Nebuchadnezzar, um, where's his name here? Uh, let's see here. Oh, here it is. Um, uh, evil, e uh, Eve. Evel Morodak, Morodak, um, something like that. Um, he is the son of Nebuchadnezzar, and we know the, the Bible uh, describes that the th that three kings would ultimately reign over uh, the children of Israel uh, from Babylon. Uh, you would have Nebuchadnezzar, you would have his son here, and then you would um, also have Belshazzar. And, and so these three sons would reign, and, and God did prophesy that, uh, that the nation that would take over Judah would also be punished, would also uh, be destroyed. And so after, uh, you know, a time, th this kingdom would be destroyed. And so they eventually were through Bel Belteshazzar. And so... Uh, and, and so we, we see here that the reason why I point this out is because favor was shown to uh, um, Jehoiachin and we see that Jehoiachin, he freely gave himself up. He, he gave himself up to the king of Babylon, him and his wives and his, his captains. They walked out. They went out to the king of Babylon. They did not after being conquered, try to flee and run away like Zedekiah did. So Zedekiah did that and his punishment was ultimately for his sons to die before his eyes and to have that being the last thing that he would see um, and ultimately having his eyes plucked out. Um, and so... Um, so yeah, so we we see that um, this this the, the this next king, uh, Avel Modoc, Avel Morodoc, uh, this king of Babylon, he would show Jehoiachin uh, favor and pull him out of prison, show him favor, give him victuals or whatever that he would need in order uh, for him to have uh, the rest of his stay in peace in Babylon. So, uh, so we, so there is a, uh, 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 so there is the reality of God still bringing uh, preservation to the land uh, in which He set His name there. So, we're going to read in the future, uh, in um, in the books to come. Um, the will, the ultimate will of God concerning the restoration of his people. And so one of the things I want to also look at in the book of Jeremiah. Um, let's see here. But before we look at the book, book of Jeremiah, I want to um, continue with uh, 2 Kings 25 describing why this was such a uh, a huge atrocity. 
in reference to the downfall of uh, Jerusalem, downfall of Judah. Um, looking at verses, let's see here, where Nebuchadnezzar uh, begins to uh, take over uh, and burn Jerusalem to the ground. Um, verse 13, and the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord and the bases and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord did um, the Chaldees break into pieces and carry and carry the brass of them to Babylon. So this huge um, brazen uh, the brass bowl that we know that was uh, before the temple um, in the courtyard there we, we see there uh, and it was um, sitting on oxen on 12 oxen uh, we, we see that Nebuchadnezzar uh, was to destroy that he was going to destroy that he was going to break all of that in pieces and the Bible says that there was no um, weight they could not calculate how much that was because of the enormous amount of brass, the enormous amount of uh, metal that they would have to carry away to Babylon as spoil, as spoil to their land. And so this was um, sad, sad that something as holy, as, as glorious, as um, as good in the sight of God that God wanted, that God specifically made um, the, the requirements for, the measurements for, as far as the temple and, and, and the pillars and, and um, the specific requirements, how he destroyed all of that because those things in themselves don't have value. The people who possess them in right relationship with God this is when those things and what God deems the relationship between the children of Israel and himself is. So this is the importance that God wants to bring to light, that these things without the right relationship don't have value. And so um, so they can be taken away by Babylon and the pots um, and the shovels and the sn snuffers and uh, the spoons and the vessels and the brass uh, wherewith they ministered took them away. And the fire pans uh, and the bowls and such things as were of gold in uh, gold and silver in silver and the captain, uh, the captain of the guard took away. So Nebuchadnezzar took these things away. And so uh, so these things were valuable. They, they were valuable, but they were in position to be taken away because of the breach in the relationship between the people and the God of Israel. And so, um, but of course, they would be put in a position later on to where in Belshazzar's time, they would disrespect uh, certain of these items and because of their um, abominable practice of these items, this is one of the reasons why we see the downfall of the nation that God ultimately prophesied that he would judge that ultimately was the agent of judgment against Judah. So they would be judged uh, and taken away by a foreign nation as Judah uh, was taken away and carried away by a foreign nation. Um, and, and so uh, it, it describes it, it, it describes more and more of the valuable things of the descriptions of what God did and how he created, how, how he wanted um uh, the people to create the things, how he did it through Solomon. We, we went through the details of what he did and how they did it. 
And so it's a sad time. It's a sad time to see the destruction of the temple, the destruction of the outer courts, the inner courts, the destruction of the wall of Jerusalem. Um, you know, and, and so in that, uh, they, they are seeing the fulfilling of Jeremiah's prophecy. They're, they're seeing the fulfillment of it. And, and the, the king of Babylon, he um, he, he commissions Nebuchadnezzar to make, uh, to, to put things in order in reference to there's a Gadaliah who is put in position to govern the area, to govern um, the area. And of course, there is the, um, as it said, the, the poorest of the nation that are put in position to um, vine dress and and to to um, till the land to make sure the land is not given to um, foreign creatures or uh, animals. You know uh, they they want to ensure that it's something inhabitable. Uh, and, and so um, so we, we see that um, this was the condition of the downfall of Judah, taking away their houses, burnt walls, uh, brought down. Um, it, it, it ultimately being something that the Lord said it would be in reference to being cast off. Um, let's see here. I'll, I'll read a few more verses. Uh, and at verse, verse 23, and when all the captains of the armies, uh, they and their men heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah governor, uh, there came to Gedaliah to Misra, uh, even Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah and Jehanan, the son of Kyria and uh, Sariah, the son of Tanai Hamath, and uh, the Nept Neptunite and uh, Jazaniah, the son of Ma the son of a Macalonite, uh, uh they and their men, and so ultimately Gedaliah uh, does succumb. Uh, he is murdered. He is murdered, and uh, the people fear the nation of Babylon and they flee to Egypt. They flee uh, to Egypt and they seek refuge there. Uh, so ultimately in all of this, you, we see that Jeremiah, the prophet, is taken care of. Jeremiah, um, in the, this process of the downfall of Jerusalem, he um, it, ultimately, as things manifested, he is rescued by an Ethiopian um, in his imprisoned state. They put him back into uh, uh, heart, the harsh uh, conditions of the prison, the, the people that the king stated, hey, he's in your hands, and they put him there. And ultimately, an Ethiopian, you know, requests from the king for him to, you know, rescue uh, Jeremiah. And so this Ethiopian is um, the one who um, has uh, or is given people to come with him to rescue him. And they pull up Jeremiah by a rope, um, by ropes in order for him to not be, um, not to, to die, not to die in um, the, uh, this muddy um, dungeon that they put him in. Uh, they, they did not like what he was saying. And so because of that, that was the reason to why he would, you know, ultimately succumb to the conditions that he would find himself in. But God would see forth that he would be rescued, that people would have a heart for him, that people would have a desire to see his well-being, that people would um, demonstrate acts of love towards him uh, that were ultimately an extension of God's love towards him. Uh, and, and so this um, 
was the reality of the situation. And so eventually we see that uh, during the, the, the this takeover, you, you have um, Nebuzaradan who uh, begins to... Um, uh, uh, he 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 sees Jeremiah and he begins to pronounce to Jeremiah the uh, truth of uh, or or what he did and he begins to give him uh, rewards and victuals because of um, his actions in the supposed um, agreement of the takeover of Judah um, and, and and so. He, he does that in loyalty to his God, the God of Israel. He doesn't he didn't do that uh, because he was loyal to uh, Babylon. Um, so in. Um, let's go to. Um, chapter thirty nine. Um, where it, verse eleven, it says um, now. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning uh, concerning Jeremiah to Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, saying, "Take him and look well to him, and do him no harm, but do unto him, even as he shall say unto you." Uh, so Nebuzaradan, the the uh, the captain of the guard, sent um, uh, and. Uh, Nebuz, Nebuzaradan, um, Rab Saris, and uh, Nur Guards Sarzer, uh, Rab Ma Rab Mag, and all the captain and all of the king of Babylon's princes, uh, uh, even they sent and took Jeremiah out of the court of the prison and committed him unto Gedaliah, um, the son of Alkiah, the son of Shaphan, that he should carry him home. Uh, so he dwelt among the people. Uh, now the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Go and speak to um, Abim, uh, 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 Ed, uh, Abid, uh, Abimelech, something like that. <laughs> A bid, uh, a bid, Me Me Melech, the Ethiopian, the e Ethiopian that um, ultimately rescued him, uh, pulled, pulling him up um, with ropes from that dungeon, um, uh, and ultimately uh, saving his life. Uh, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Uh, uh, behold, I will bring my word upon this city for evil and not for good, and they shall be uh, accompli they shall be accomplished in that day uh, before thee, uh, but I will deliver thee in that day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men uh, of whom uh, thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, uh, but thy life shall be for a, uh, be for a prey upon thee, uh, because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord. So uh, we see that this uh, Ed Bimelech, um, uh, this uh, Ethiopian who showed kindness to Jeremiah would receive kindness from the Lord, would be sustained, would be delivered, and would not succumb to the destruction that was coming upon uh, uh, Judah. And, and so, so in chapter 40 um, of the book of Jeremiah, we, we see that Nebuzaradan is, um, as he is, uh, on his way to Babylon, we see that he begins to uh, pronounce special things to um, Jeremiah uh, and telling Jeremiah and, and ultimately giving Jeremiah what he uh, was going to give him. And uh, it says, uh, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord after Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left him. Uh, let him go from Ramah, 
when he had taken him uh, being bound in chains among all that were carried away uh, captive of Jerusalem uh, and Judah, which were carried away captive up unto Babylon. And the captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said unto him, The Lord thy God hath pronounced this evil, uh, have pronounced this evil upon this place. Now the Lord hath uh, brought it and done according to, uh, according as he hath said, because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed his voice. So he's saying that the nation had sinned, sinned against the Lord and not obeyed his voice. Therefore, uh, this thing is come upon you, have come upon Judah. And now behold, I loose thee this day from the chains which were upon thy hands. If it seem good unto thee to come with me into Babylon, come and I will look well unto thee. But if it seem ill unto thee to come with me into Babylon, forbear. Behold, all the land is before thee, whether it seemeth good um, or, and convenient for thee to go, uh, um, thither go. Um, now, while he was not yet gone back, he said, go back. Um, also to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikim, the son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon hath made governor over the cities of Judah and dwell with him among the people or go whithersoever it seemeth convenient unto thee to go. So the captain of the guard gave him victuals and, and a reward and let him go. And then Jeremiah uh, and and went and went Jeremiah unto Gedaliah the son of Ahikim uh, to Mizpah and dwelt with him among the people that were left in the land. Um, and, and so we we see uh, here that uh, God ultimately secures Jeremiah. He protects Jeremiah, puts Jeremiah in a position to where uh, he would survive the downfall of Judah. Many people had died. Uh, many people were, ca uh, were, were uh, captives and, and uh, brought to the land of uh, Babylon. Uh, but uh, Jeremiah uh, would be among the people who would not have to go to um, Babylon uh, that would remain in the land, but ultimately he would go where he would desire. And uh, this would be a manifestation or a reward towards his faithfulness to his God in uh, his prophetic ministry. His ministry that started um, um, uh, towards the middle of Josiah's reign all the way to all the way through Zedekiah's reign. So this um, uh, ministry of Jeremiah was a very powerful uh, ministry to where he was, uh, you know, uh, called the weeping prophet, but he was trying to warn the nations of this coming judgment uh, by this foreign king, Nebuchadnezzar, who was coming to take them over because of their perpetual sin against the Lord God of Israel. And so this was something that was uh, going to happen, and and it's going to ultimately happen to the the nations of the world, the nations of the world that rebel against God. Uh, we see that um, you know, uh, as we were talking about, nations are put into position position because of the abominations that they practice that are against God's ways that put them in position to be uh, set, uh, placed into captivity, uh, placed to be overtaken and, and ultimately brought into foreign lands and to be slaves and to be uh, individuals that are, uh, you know, punished for their uh, behavior, uh, punished uh, uh, because of their way of life. And so, 
this is not to say that uh, the Bible condones or supports slavery because the Lord God is not here to come to solve um, as far as what Jesus came to do. He's not here to come to solve our civil issues, these civil issues in reference to is slavery fair or not? Is it right or not? Uh, you, you know, uh, we know it's wrong, but we also know that God is coming back to get rid of all evil simultaneously. He's coming back to get rid of all things that offend God, not just slavery, not just, you know, uh, uh, the, the not not just you know murder or or theft or or lying or stealing he's, he's not just coming back for one thing he's coming back for all things that offend because evil has a timeline you know it's it, again it's not a, a black or white thing it's not a red or yellow thing it's not a green or, or orange thing it's 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 a uh, uh a sin thing. It's a sin thing. It's it's a, a, a rebellion against God thing. It's a uh, doing the things of the world uh, which promote the judgment of God thing. You know, it's a hell in heaven thing. And so people have to understand that there's a way that leads to heaven and there's a way that leads to hell or there's many ways that leads to hell. And there's one way through Jesus Christ that leads to heaven, you know. Uh, you know, he said it himself that he's the way, the truth and life. And no man or woman comes to the father God except through him. He is the sole way, the exclusive way to come to God. And so nations are in position to suffer because of their perpetual abominations against the God of creation. And so God is trying to bring a solution to mankind, bring a solution because he says, hey, the earth is like, um, um, you know, uh, we know that the earth is like, or the, the, the cultures of the world, the, the people of the world are like the Titanic, you know, and it's going to sink the nations of the world, Babylon to come is, or Babylon that is here in a sense, uh, spiritual Babylon is going to ultimately sink. It's going to be destroyed. Um, and, and, and so, uh, we, that have that have control of that God has given us the control of the uh, the Jesus lifeboats. We have to get on the lifeboats because the gigantic, um, awesome looking Titanic, the wonderful looking, the the uh, um, unsinkable per se, the unsinkable, as they said in those days, the unsinkable Titanic, this ship that is. Uh, invincible, it cannot sink. And it's, and so Babylon thinks that about herself, you know, that it cannot sink, that nothing can come against America. Nothing can come against uh, this uh, uh, modern world, this full of, of power, full of intelligence, full of, of you know, uh, resources world. We're invincible. But yet sin is the uh, is the monkey wrench. Sin, sin is what brings about the damnation to the most strongest nations. And so the strongest nations, when they uh, are dabbling in the or, or walking in the ways of sin, in the ways of, and when we, when we say sin, we're not just saying some vague word that no one no one understands. We're talking about lawlessness. We're, we're talking about uh, a lifestyle in which a people or people group live contrary to the laws of God. So there's ways that man ought to live, and man is choosing to rebel and not live in those ways. And so because of that, societies of the earth are in jeopardy are in a position to where they're going to be judged by God. And, and so God is going to find them wanting. He's going to find them uh, w w without uh, an excuse, without a 
solution without a, res a proper response to the, to, to the reasons to why they're in the condition that they're in. And so because of that, he's going to bring about judgment and uh, ultimate destruction to the nations that forget God. And, and so, uh, so um, you know, Judah is a, uh, a lesson in, in, in itself. We, 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 we are learning from what Judah went through. We're learning from what uh, we see happening in the world as far as the destruction of things because of perpetual sin. And so the, the world is trying to disregard the, the, the continual corruption that they're involved in. And so in that, they're storing up the... Uh, problems they're storing up the judgment they're storing up the uh, responses that God is ultimately going to give because of the violations that they had done and and so uh, God is the God of love and because he loves he judges because he loves he responds to atrocities because he loves he makes a solution he makes a way out of uh the corruption that he sees uh in the world and so jesus is the way jesus is the route out of the pollution that the world is involved in and so we have to turn to jesus we have to forsake the wicked cultural practices of the world. So one of the um, things about the cultural practices that is happening is that the, the people don't have the discernment to understand where the gateways uh, manifest. The gateways. So there are gateways that bring about so there's certain parts of the cultures that are not bad, but then there's certain parts of the culture that are demonic and corrupted. And so you have gateways, we have actions, we have things that we're involved in that uh, bring about the connection from the, the more innocent parts of the culture to the polluted and corrupted part of the cultures. So these gateways are what we have to uh, have the discernment to not participate in so that we don't find ourselves uh, walking uh, without discernment and ending up in the corrupted parts of the cultures. Um, in our modern day, one of the uh, things that people are doing uh, the, the music culture is be, be, uh, becoming far more occultic, demonic. And when we say demonic, we're talking about uh, the fact that a practice is, is influenced and, give, and instructions are given by demons. Demons give instruction and influence things so that the things can emu can can look like can can uh, walk in the very teaching or the doctrines in which they prescribe, in which they want, in which they desire to see. Uh, and so this is an abomination, and these are the very things that are practices within uh, the cultures that we see. Nowadays, a very, um, you know, I spoke about some practic th practical things earlier, but one of the practical things that we see nowadays is how young men are enticed, are the, 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 a cultural trend, a cultural uh, uh, way of life is to, uh, you know, have your hair grown out. And, and locked in dread form and to have it um, falling over on your face, having it laying, laying on your face to where your eyes are covered, to where your face is covered. And so, uh, so the young men are walking around like, 
you know, with their heads kind of bent down a little bit, you know, uh, kind of hiding their face, hiding their eyes. And we know that is demonic. It's demonic. Why? Because uh, we know that there's a heavy celebration of death in our modern day. Uh, it's, it's in the music. It's in the way that they respond. It's in the way that they uh, rap or sing or or uh, live their lives. And, and so one of the things that that represents when they cover their faces, when they cover their eyes, we know that the Bible says that the light of the body is the eye. And so one of the things that people don't realize is that uh, the eye, you, when you look into the eyes of an individual, you can, uh, there, there is a nakedness, there is a vulnerability, there is a, uh, uh, a reality that you are seeing. And so when these individuals who are prompted by the cultural style to cover their eyes, uh, you have a, uh, a way about that that represents demons, that represent demons in the sense that the uh, demonic culture is not just wanting to make you uh, demonic from the inside only there is a also looking like a devil looking at like the demonic from the outside and so demonic uh characteristics and behaviors are being popular and people look at it as if oh it's just a fashion trend it's okay it's not bad you know they just wear dreads covering their faces but no it's not bad but the reality is, it's 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 demonic. It's, it's not just bad. It's demonic, because one of the things I remember, um, when the Lord gives me grace to cast out a devil, cast out an evil spirit out of someone, is that the eyes, at times you will see that they don't want to look at you in your eyes. They don't want to look at you. Like the person who's overcome by a demon, they don't want to look at you in your eyes. Because there, in, in the saint, in the son of God, there is a power in his eyes. There's a power in, because why? Because there's a purity and there's a grace. So the the, the grace represents the power and the uh, purity is because of the lifestyle. So the lifestyle of the Christian and uh, the power uh, that he gains because of the purity of his lifestyle, you will see, you can see that. And so the unclean aspects of a person's lifestyle and behavior, you can expose that through the eyes. So demon, people who are overcome by demonic um, entities or spirits, they don't want to look you directly in the eyes uh, most of the time because it's it, there, there's a vulnerability. There's a, uh, a, a fear. There's a corruption that they uh, perceive that you are seeing, that you have power to access. And so they, they want, so, so in this modern day, you see them hiding their eyes, hiding their eyes, uh, like d demonic. It's one of the, one of the things that I, I remember long ago in a dream, the Lord was revealing to me in a dream, um, something supernatural. And he was, uh, I, I remember there was a loved one, uh, that, uh, was in my dream, but it wasn't really a loved one. It was a demon. And so how, and it took the shape of the loved one in order for it to cloak into, um, in order for it to want to deceive me into trusting it. And one of the ways that I was quickly able to discern that it was not uh, the loved one, that it was an unclean spirit was its eyes. I looked in its eyes and I saw that, oh, it was cat eyes. I looked in its eyes and I, and, and soon as I looked in his eyes, I, I didn't say anything. It didn't say anything. 
And I was able to see, oh, and, and my whole demeanor changed, like everything changed. And I was, and, and I began to um, come against it violently as far as with the spirit, by uh, with the word of God that was coming out of my mouth um, and, and, and everything else. And so the enemy is trying to deceive the people into thinking uh, that uh, things in the world are harmless. Things in the world are just, you know, uh, just whatever. But God is trying to give mankind, uh, especially his sons, his sons and daughters in Christ. He's trying to, who have the power of God, he's giving them understanding so that they can discern good from evil, righteousness from unrighteousness, holy from profane. And uh, so in the demonic culture, the Bible um, uh, explains, the Bible explains in the book of Jude that uh, Jude uh, is saying that hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. What does that mean? That means that there is a way that people dress how they adorn themselves, how they uh, wear their attire. There's a way that uh, uh, people put on things or wear things that is in the image or, or that is stemming from or a spawn of the corruption of the flesh, the corruption of the carnal mind. So this is why the Bible talks about the attire of a harlot. Or, or we, we know there's an attire of a whoremonger. We know that there's many attires that represent the business or the, uh, the, the condition that a, a person is in. And so the Bible is telling us to hate even the garments or the clothes that are spotted or that have the identity um, of the flesh within it and so people are creating in this modern day clothes you know uh that represent the carnal flesh you know clothes you know like so this woman uh, she's gonna wear super tight clothes uh and reveal parts of her body that don't need to be revealed because her desire is to hypnotize and uh and to bring men under her spell or women under her spell uh you know and, and so men you have them walking around with no shirts on you have them walking around um you know with tight clothes as well because they want to advertise as well they want to advertise their muscles they want to advertise uh their, their the strength of their youth to to show that they're for sale, to show that they desire something from you, to hypnotize you into uh, coming to them and receiving what they have uh, for you, and and so this is th these are you know levels of the abominations that are within the cultures, you know, and, and so the identity that is within uh, the person needs to be purged and renewed by the Lord. The Lord is trying to give people new identities, uh, uh, Christ, Christ-like, Christ-filled, Holy Spirit-filled identities that uh, God has told us that we can have because he wants to prepare us for the time in which he's prophesied about in reference to the renewing of the earth the the separating of all things that offend and the stationing his people to be with him forever uh, blessing and promoting them uh, and just like Jeremiah was promoted and blessed after the the destruction of Judah so the destruction of Judah happens Jeremiah is blessed promoted and uh, given the land and the earth is going to be destroyed in reference to uh, 
uh, Babylon. Babylon is going to be destroyed. Uh, we know the old Babylon is going to be destroyed, but we're talking about the new Babylon in Revelations that is being talked about. That's going to be destroyed. And the so when that is destroyed, the saints are going to be given the land. The, the land are going to be for Jesus and his people. Uh, uh, and, and so this is a, a reality of what God is doing in reference to the restoration of his people, the renewing of the planet, the renewing of uh, the relationship between the sons of God and their father. And so, so yeah, so God is repairing the people, repairing the land, uh, and uh, positioning people to have understanding have a, a, a grace to perceive so that they don't fall victim to the gateways that want to lead people to full-blown sin in the end. And so God is trying to ensure that our lives uh, reap the righteousness and goodness that he wants in the end. You know, he, he, he doesn't want evil for us. He wants good for us. He wants that expected end for his sons and sons and daughters. The expected end because of the, the continual righteousness uh, throughout the life, the lifestyle and the life of the believer in the God of Israel, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so yeah, so that's it for, um, uh, this second Kings study, of course, we're going to get into more aspects of the fall of Babylon uh, and uh, the different um, things that we uh, will see, the newer revelations that we will come across as we look at other books like Jeremiah and when we go through Jeremiah and other books um, like the uh, minor prophets that we were um, referencing, reference to Micah or Habakkuk or, um, um, uh, or, or Zephaniah, you know, any of the other books that speak on this topic that can help us grasp more of what God is doing and what God has done and what God will do. And, uh, and so, yeah, so that's a blessing. So God bless each and every one of you. Uh, and as I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and your feet, my feet, our feet will follow in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Talk to you soon.